Hello everyone, and welcome to the Alpha Strike We Play video series on infantry, infantry. for Battletech. The yes. so Terran's here, and we're going to we're going to focus on movement and how they work in the game for movement, for movement specifically for infantry. Their movement rules. Yep, that's it. Okay. Okay. So let's start with um, well, the basic, basic Old standard infantry. Yep. infantry. Basic infantry. Um, so the important thing to remember with infantry is they have no facing. Infantry do not have a facing. They can face wherever you want. They don't doesn't matter. Yep. You don't have to pay movement points to change facing for infantry. Uh, they can move in any direction unless blocked by impassable terrain, which we'll get into in a sec. And um, pay the same movement point cost as other units for most stuff. There's yeah. a couple of specifics that they uh, have here underneath, but basically the same as other units, except you don't have to pay to change facing. Now, if we if we bing up the conventional infantry units table again, just briefly, bing, on two thirteen there, uh, you'll see that standard foot infantry has one ground movement. <laughs> one. <laughs> one. A single movement point. <laughs> Uno. Well, look, let's face it. <laughs> if infantry are probably best for holding positions and things like that. Static. You know? Yes. I mean, look, a battle mech or whatever is really good, but when it comes to holding an area, infantry cost-effective-wise and all that sort of thing, they are probably the best choice for that. They're, they're pretty they're damn really good. good. You just have to get them where they need to be. And that, that can be a bit of a challenge. We'll probably go into that later on. Mm. But once you get them there, they're pretty damn good at it. Um, so some of the specific rules around infantry movement, basically it's level changes, buildings, water, and woods. So infantry are only allowed to change one level at a time. You can only climb one level per hex that you move into. You pay the the standard thing but because you've only got one movement you get the minimum move rule so you're allowed to move into that hex even though you're changing a height yeah so that's cool we, um, we also talked about buildings in some of our earlier videos yes and depending on the like other units or whatever they have to pay x amount to to enter it infantry however is mm. just one yeah one to change levels one to enter one to exit it's like, it, it, yeah, for for conventional like ground infantry, yes, it's it's one ground MP to enter a building, regardless of the building type, mm. and changing levels in the building is the same thing. Um, you can get jump infantry. So jump infantry have a jump movement of either two or three. Yeah, depending on what they're armed with. Depending on yeah, what what weapon you give them. Uh, so they move basically the same way Max do. Yeah. So it's a, a thing, right? Um, I'll take a jump bonus. <laughs> You're going to need it. <laughs> lots of stuff out there to kill you. Uh, one problem with the Inner Spear Battle Armor is that with um, if you give them, if you give Battle Armor missiles and jump packs and their Inner Spear, then they can't jump while they've got the missile pack attached. Yes, that's right. So until you use that missile pack and jettison it, you can't jump. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, oh yeah, the controlling player announces you're ejecting the missile launcher at any time. You don't have to technically shoot them. It's preferable to shoot them. I mean, you paid all that BV for them. That's right. Um, you carried it all the way to the <laughs> battlefield. You might as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you give your infantry VTOL or UMU movement, then you use the rules for those in VTOL and underwater movement. It's the same thing. It's exactly the same. So normally infantry, conventional infantry, if they go into water, they get wiped they are, out. They are destroyed. So infantry yeah. can't move into depth one or deeper water unless the rules regarding a particular type of infantry specifically state otherwise. Yeah. Um, so we will, we will be talking a bit later on. We'll be doing some videos on specialist types 
of units of infantry. There are they some can cool do. ones. There yeah. are some cool ones, yeah. But just to give you some basics for now, that's just uh, what there are definitely on. some out there with UMU. The UMUs are basically like a jump jet, but they're underwater jump jets. So think like a, a jet ski motor. Yeah. Uh, it's basically the same thing. Um, it pretty much gives you underwater movement, underwater movement unit. unit. Yes, yeah. It yeah, gives UMU. you underwater movement points like jumping. Um, uh, so buildings we did, uh, you can, uh, conventional infantry can enter it as if it's a clear, clear hex, one ground movement to get in there, yep. regardless of the building. Mechanized infantry, which is the ones that you have um, in the uh, hover, wheeled or tracked, they have to pay two ground movement to enter a building hex. And to change elevation, I think, as well. Yeah. So they double the cost. Uh, if they only have one MP available, they can still enter it using the minimum rules. Nice. Thing. Nice. Uh, woods are a fun one. So to enter any light woods hex, infantry pay only one MP. Nice. Uh, except for mechanized infantry. Mechanized infantry pay two. Two. Infantry pay, pay only two MP to enter any heavy woods hex. Mechanized infantry get three. You can see the, the pattern here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, unless they're prohibited from entering a specific type. So it's, um, that's based on the, um, on the, uh, movement type that they are. So hover would be unable to go into that, into the heavy woods, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So you still have to follow that. that. Yeah. But you still have to follow those, that, yeah. those rules. Um, but for normal everyday infantry, one movement point for light woods, two for heavy woods. Pretty cool, really. Mm. I, I I think that's very, very cool. Like I say, they, they don't have a lot of movement options, but they don't have a facing, which is cool. Yeah. And as long as you can get them where they need to be, nine times out of ten, you don't really need to move them much. So No, that's right. That's right, yeah. So they're good. A couple but of I mean, at the time. You can get some speed out of them. If you have a look at, say, a basic rifle hover or whatever, or yeah. even like energy rifles, or they have a ground movement of five. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty so there's, good. So there's 20 dudes in an Innisfear hover rifle mechanized infantry platoon, and they have a five ground movement allowance. So I said a plus two. Plus two modifier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's at least a one. I think a five is two. Yeah. yeah. That's that's pretty cool. That's, yeah, five is two just. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's actually really good. Um, yeah, that's right on the edge. Um, so as long as you move in a straight line and you don't take like any extra for moving into different types of terrain and levels and things like that, if, if you move your five hexes with your five movement points, you yeah. get a plus two. Yeah, that's right. But that's very yeah, handy. that's that's very very cool. Um, right. And with a three jump for the jump infantry platoons, they can build up a reasonable one as well. Um, well, yeah, movement of, what was it, three, three or two, depending on what they've got, right? Yeah, yeah. three or two. Um, You're still getting the plus one. You get a plus two with the rifle if they move the full distance. Yeah. Nice. It's very cool. All right, there we go. I so think that's, that's sort of the basics of it. Basics for... Pretty much all the infantry movement, conventional infantry movement. Battle armor is um, in there as well, but it's it's a little bit different. But basic infantry movement, done, sorted. Okay. Uh, not fantastic movers, I think, is the gist. Well, I mean, if you're talking <laughs> about your your basic foot sloggers or whatever, they'll definitely Long standard need transports. Troopers. Yeah, then the way they're not going anywhere. Around. Now that's that would be pretty common practice to have them with a fast, fast or faster moving transport anyway. Yeah, gives them some extra protection while they're getting into the field. You you get them where they're going and you leave them there. It's like your LRM dudes. You you get them where they need to be and then you get them to do what they need to do while they're there. Yeah, it, yeah. It's not about movement. It's about performing the function. So well, even with sort of modern day warfare now whatever you have your armored columns of vehicles moving along they need they need infantry as a 
for extra protection. Mm. Because if they go into an area that has infantry waiting for them, yeah, that's bad news. Yeah. Bad news. Oh, dear. So we'll stick with that one. We'll talk a bit more about battle armor in a separate video. Yep. We'll get into that with those. But for this video, I think that's it. And we'll um, probably the next one we'll talk about uh, probably combat, how conventional I'd, I'd infantry say. and that do combat, yep. because that's quite interesting too. Combat will have to be next. Mm. All good. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. See you in the next video. Bye, Bye. guys.